Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flake Show. My name is Chris Wong. So let's talk about Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War came out this weekend. Uh, and I actually got to watch it twice. So uh, it's an amazing movie. I'm actually... It's still embedded in my mind i mean all the way down to the last scene it is very haunting um and it's certainly very different than uh, other marvel movies to date it does not have a happy ending um if you already saw this you probably saw that this is a spoilers spoilers major spoilers um type of overview but more of a discussion about things that happen than this right um and you also looked at the title about thanos so you're kind of like what what am i talking about so uh, let me let me get into it uh, uh a lot more than my uh, non-spoiler review which i couldn't say anything because i think anything i say about the movie felt like a spoiler so um is thanos Thanos is the main character. I mean, he does not appear in every scene. He appears the beginning, uh, turns around with that reveal of this is the main guy. And then for most part, when you've you've met him in Avengers, uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy, um, he's been pretty much like a, oh, okay, he's just a big guy. You know, he's like just a big guy with uh, who wants to rule the world or some, rule the universe and stuff like that. And then so when you go into this movie, you're like thinking that's exactly the same. He, he seems to be just that type of stereotypical character. Um, he kills off Loki. He kills off Heimdall. Uh, he kills off whole bun bunch of Asgardians, actually pretty much everybody on that ship. Um, like what happened to Valkyrie and Korg, I wonder. But uh, he kills off everybody. Um, and so you're like, okay, all right, they get, they have this is a force to be reckoned with. We want to take this guy down. You know, we're gonna take this guy down. Uh, we need to. We need to. Um, he's gonna destroy everybody and stuff and then you know the surprising thing about this is that you get into the characters the Avengers and how they get together what they're gonna do their plan and stuff and then something amazing happens about like an hour in right amazing happens is the fact that you actually get to know more about the villain and then he is different uh, he is uh, more characterized. He, he shows his past. He 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 shows his motivations. Uh, you see him actually care for Gamora. Uh, you actually see him uh, taking her in uh, while well killing off everybody. But you understand why. Um, it, it's everything is down to that that dagger he gives. It's basically what he's telling her with that dagger that he puts on her finger as as she says, "Look." It's one ways the other is you you have to balance it perfectly balanced and that's his motivation because he is really wanting to balance out this universe and he reveals that also to Doctor Strange on Titan that um, that is his clear motivation because the universe has only finite resources the population is going out of control going crazy and he's seen that in his own home world on Titan, that uh, the resource was finite and got overpopulated, and so the destruction of his home uh, happened. And so it's incredible thinking for that because it's different than saying, I want to rule the world, I'm going to rule the universe. He sees himself as a hero, the only individual being who has the will and the strength and the power to possibly be the only one that could you know uh save the universe if you will he's thinking far into the future where you uh, kill some to save save the rest you know things like this they it, it's very gray area it's it's so um a it's more shown in this than some of the other movies, right? Or other movies in other universes and other type movies where uh, they show, they, they sometimes have that element in there where, um, you know, to kill a few so to save the world. So like, like in Zack Snyder's Watchmen, or even the Watchmen comic, Osmandius, he wants to, he sacrificed all these people in those cities so that they would stop the war. 
kill a few, save the universe, you know, so he f feels himself as a hero, um, so that's what I see in Thanos, Thanos, that's what Thanos sees himself, he is willing to sacrifice all these people, and he knows, uh, he's, in his mind, he's only have willpower enough to do that without having those feelings of uh, feeling bad for doing that because it's for the end game. It's for the, uh, the the central goal is to save the universe. He's not living in the now. He doesn't. He's living for the future. He wants the universe to be uh, uh, okay. He wants the universe to have enough resources for the remaining people that survive. Uh, in fact, there are children on that planet that he killed with Gomorrah's plan who are now not starving. They actually can see a blue sky and things like that. But at, yet he killed a lot of people on that. But for that goal, it's not just destroying the planet. He's only destroying half. So it's like you got to feel for the guy a little bit. He's like he's really just going to snap his fingers to destroy half of the universe so that the other half can prevail, the other half could live, and the universe and the mother nature is not dying because of the overpopulation of it. Of course, how is he choosing to right or wrong? It's almost godlike. And I am incredibly amazed at how biblical this thing is i mean yeah in the comics he does the same thing but in the comics he was doing it for uh lady death right so that he was more like he's trying to get her attention or, or appease her so he sacrifices for her this is he sacrificing for the universe and i think that is such an amazing arc for uh thanos here an amazing reveal in anything when he's talking with Gamora and when he's saving her and the things like little things like don't look that way child you know just look just concentrate on perfectly good balance it's like he's not a real bad guy uh, he in his heart and mind is doing this for the universe now, up to the point where even Gamora uh, who really sees him as just a bad guy bad guy he uh, I think for a while she was just following him around because he saved her life and stuff she didn't know what to do but um, but she didn't love him at all right it was, she did kind of you see him when she had that fake death at the, at the where the collector was and um, and so she was crying it kind of confused her like she loved him but yet not um and then it's so cool to see a possible and where they went to i forgot what that place was called with red skull was there where actually shows up out of nowhere um and he's like crying he's crying he's weeping because he has to sacrifice the love in his life and she was like mocking him because she's like how why are you crying you have no heart you know you're, you're, you don't love anybody and then red skull's like he's not crying for himself you know, he's crying for you or something like that. And um, so she re uh, realizes that he did, he does indeed love her. Um, and in a way, he is not selfish. Now, you may be thinking he's selfish by killing her, sacrificing, but this is his love. The one thing he really treasured the most, his daughter. But because he's not selfish, he's willing to not be selfishly keeping her alive but by killing her so that he could get the stone and finish the job to make sure to save the universe so with that in mind man i was like confused because i was ready to kill this guy at the beginning of the movie and then when he's talking to Gorn, like something Something's not right. I'm starting to feel for him, a little bit of sympathy, you know. And then, and then I started to root for him. It's like, oh my God, I better not. They better not take the gauntlet away. They better not take away the stones, you know. You're there with him with the mission because this is like a heist film too, right? This is like a heist film. In, in every heist film, Ocean's Eleven, whatever, what have you not. Uh, I find myself, and I don't know if a lot of people do too, is that they're so close. They work so hard to get that prize, right? They, to, to steal that diamond, that gold, or whatever. You want to see them do it, especially if they're like the main characters. Um, and and you want to see them do it. You want to see them actually get it. So for once, maybe they could actually get away. And so when I'm watching this, I'm like, oh, 
Star Lord messes up, which is stupid, but Star Lord messes up and wakes him up out of his trance from, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's her name, Mantis, and and then he Spider Man ripped off the gauntlet. He took it off, but he grabbed it back, and so I was like, yes, you know, I was actually yes, he did it, lose it, and then up to even to the point where uh, Vision uh, loses his uh, uh, stone, his stone explodes because of the Scarlet Witch. I'm like, oh man stop be you know i really wanted him to get the stone and he did and he did the time thing we were so awesome and he got the stone back and he threw it on there and then he gets hit by thor i'm like oh my god now thor you know i was weird i know i was rooting for thanos and i was getting irritated that they're stopping him because i wanted to see it happen uh i knew it was going to happen i think my theory was correct about him doing the snap uh, actually came true but i didn't know he actually only made it like half the universe i thought it was going to be like the whole universe and to reset everything uh, and dr strange was going to be uh, uh one of the ones that doesn't uh who makes it out but i was wrong about that too so he does the thing and i'm all the way i'm with him all the way up to the point and then something incredible happens when he turns white he goes to an awesome composed scene with color uh, is red uh, like a sea and there's like a gate and there's a little Gamora right there and then and pretty much she says along the lines of was it worth it you know you did you got everything or was it worth it and you see his face and his like I think he has tears but and then you and then at that moment okay <laughs> it was like slow really there's quiet no music and stuff um, or there was some kind of piano, I think, music, and people just start just. It was this is the rapture, okay? Thanos is God, and this is the rapture. In order to save the universe, half of them must go. Um, and for me, when up to that point, just having snapped a finger, it seems easy. It seemed like that's it. All right, let's do it. That's it. But because the movie slowed down. I had that silent moment and people started disappearing after everyone that starts to disappear i and myself in my head start to realize oh my god what have i done for cheering this guy on because those are uh, big sacrifices right because you're like this and you don't really see anything happen then it's like gone but because you can actually see it happening slowly and their friends and their family see the uh the other you know your other partner or something going at the same time you start to realize this is the whole universe is going to be this a father is watching his kid disappear his his kid uh, kids are watching their parents disappear their friends disappearing uh, it's slowly dissipating to non-existence um uh, that slow pace of realizing like oh my god who's next like it, there's no stopping it there's nothing you can do it is done um and i teared up when tom holland peter parker's character started disappearing and he says and and he even voiced tells like i don't want to die i don't want to die and that part it broke my heart i mean it really did from the shock factor from the other ones are like oh my god it's really happening it's in my own head i'm like i can't believe i cheered him on even though it may have been the right thing to do for thanos i'm sure he also felt some regret he's can and it's so cool about the motion capture for his face because even he when he's back on titan he sat down there's a moment of relief and stuff but i know there, there's like a little bit of sadness and the stuff that the sacrifice he has done uh the people that have died the black order you know that was his generals and stuff like that all the the sacrifices that made to get to that point to accomplish his goal uh to restore balance in the universe that had to be done and, and so you see that but you also feel the cost of it uh, by seeing all these characters disappear here and there um, even at the end of the movie the post credits when Nick Fury uh, and that's the scary one because when the, the driver was gone uh, uh, Maria was gone is that her name Maria has gone uh, Nick Fury is rushing in the back people are disappearing the chopper you know it's so amazing that sight it's so quiet I love it 
and it's like nothing I've never seen ever seen before. They they crashed this the 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 concept of of what's a hero, what's good or what's wrong, or how far to go in this movie than in any other Marvel movie today. Okay, they've they finally Russo's and the Russo brothers would probably be the ones to do it because they they questioned a little bit about that in Winter Soldier, right? Uh, they're targeting all these um, mutants. <laughs> Uh, mutants, uh, you know, meta peoples, meta superhero, you know, special people, um, and and, and which, is, which is like, what's the law here, or, or should they be governed by the government, and it lead to the Sokovia Accords, uh, responsibility and things like that, but it's a very it's, it's played lightly, but this is played head on, right from the villain, because you're here from his point of view, uh, for the most part of the movie, not the first part, but the, the later parts of the movie, that's pretty much his point of view, he's on a quest he's he's got a, a mission a goal in his mind it's is he sacrificing his own love for Gamora in order to accomplish this goal um, so it 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 becomes selfless not selfish uh, in in his mind I mean look at him he doesn't even kill Captain America he just bounces on just to get out of the way because he needs to get to his goal um, and I think that is a magnificent character in if you look at his point of view if you're like the osmandius type of viewpoint then you can call him a hero or uh, if you're a rorschach then you would call him a villain right so those are kind of questions those are the kind of depth that this movie shows that none of the other movies have really shown killmonger had something like that although there's more political and the kind of state I really dug it. I mean, Thanos is a great character. Um, he's he is it's this this movie is haunting. I, I love this movie a, a lot. Uh, I've watched it twice now. I want to watch it some more. Um, I think it does most of everything right. Uh, it's perfectly balanced uh, um, for the most part in terms of tone. Um, I watched it again because even though the first time it bothered me with all the Guardians type material, I think the the darkness that comes after uh, really uh, uh, balances out the humor from the Guardians uh, at that point because they're um, the, it becomes really pretty pretty type of sad for that group you know only one of them remains Raccoon uh, Rocket Raccoon remains so everybody else is gone um, and man. I mean, I think there's more to this movie. I want to see, like, the Russo Brothers cut. Because there's a lot of scenes in the trailers that didn't make it into the thing. So I really want to see more of that. But um, my thoughts for now is that Thanos is an amazing uh, title character. Um, I hope he stays longer. Um, I mean, I think if people want to see this as a win for him... Um, like this, if this is the last movie you're going to see, he's like, he just won the whole thing. And, and he saved the universe by doing what he, he did, if he was right, if he was correct. But that's not to say that there might not, um, um, not to say that they could probably, uh, in a way, find a way to reverse the, uh, reverse the whole thing, um, in Avengers 4, you know, uh, because, Doctor Strange did see something, you know, he saw the millions of different ways of possibility they could win. And there's only one way they could all survive or something like that. So, um, and that was interesting because I think what it was was that that one possibility would only come to fruition if he gave uh, Thanos the, the time stone and that Tony is left alive. Like maybe all, all the other possibilities, those two mattered the most. That the he gets the time stone, the, the snap happens, the rapture happens, and that Tony has to be alive. Tony has to be alive. Tony is the key! The key! <laughs> so um, uh, I think out of those two, that's why he figured that was the way to go. That was the only way. Um, are they all going to survive? I don't know. Uh, I think a lot of them may not actually make it to the Avengers for i think the people who actually got killed not by the rapture disappear but actually killed so like maybe vision uh i don't know i tore it off um 
uh, Loki, Heimdall, The Collector, um, Gamora maybe, although there are supposed to be Guardians 3s in it, so I don't know, so let's let's see what happens, I mean, it's very interesting, um, it doesn't bother me one bit knowing that not all of them will dis die and disappear, but just for this movie, it's it's great, it is a great movie, um, in fact, so I'm so compelled by uh, <laughs> Thanos. I want to get that hundred dollar Hasbro uh, glove, man. I want to put it over here, you know. And so uh, that's what I think about it. And the whole movie, Thanos, Thanos, Thanos. Um, uh, when he's on screen, it's electrifying. I, 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 I like when he comes on screen. My attention is like full focus, right? It's like. He's the man. He's the guy. Yeah, sure. Thor was kind of cool and stuff. Hulk was like, meh. You know, no Hulk. No, I don't want to fight. But um, but uh, th they're like the side characters for me. When you watch the movie and anything, you watch it again, they're the ones that are in the way of Thanos. So, I mean, that's how I feel anyway. But great, great action sequences. Um a nicely paced movie uh didn't get boring at all and uh a great superb ending um i i cannot it's so haunting and beautiful uh and it's so much so much to take to heart uh that it, it's amazing i think this is my best film of the year so far all right, guys, uh, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you watched Infinity Wars before watching this video. Um, if not, then maybe it compels you to go watch it. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.